into the history of gangster rap, the forward is by none other than Exhibit, which is incredible. You have everyone in here from School E.D. to Kendrick Lamar, as you say on the cover. Um, oh man, I mean, some of uh, gangster rap's best world-renowned people have broke through and done incredible, and still doing incredible things. Um, it seems like even um, some of these gangster rappers have been more commercial than commercial rappers actually, and um, what they've been able to do. Uh, what is the inspiration behind you writing this book right here, The, the History of Gangster Rap? Uh, it ties directly into Exhibit. I've been friends with Exhibit since around 95 on both, uh, you know, knowing him through the music, but then on a personal level. And uh, his uncle one day, when he was getting a radio show, his uncle Vidal was like, hey man, you should call Sorm to host this with you. He'd be perfect. That's your friend, and he knows a lot about rap, and you guys have hilarious conversations. Open bar radio. Open bar radio, yes. So then uh, Exhibit just called me one day. He's like, what you doing today, Sorm? I was like, sitting at my kitchen table. <laughs> and um, he's like, funny. But uh, then he, uh, he's like, hey, you want to do a radio show with me? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I got on the radio show, and then George was tuning in one night, thankfully, and heard me. And uh, George called me the next day and was like, hey, Soren, there's all these rap books that come out. How come you're not doing any of them? And I was like, it's funny you say that, George. You know, I've had a couple of deals fall through. I've written to several on my own and had a couple through small publisher, but you know, it just hasn't worked out yet. And I'd love to do it, and I want to do it. And George, for those who don't know, is Ice T's manager. So then um, I was like, well, if you want to help me, George, let's do it. Mic check one, two. Ready? What's going on, y'all? The Hype Magazine. This is Henji up in the building. We over here at Barnes and Nobles at the Grove. A history of gangster rap. And I got George Hinojosa who played a big role in it. How you doing, George? I'm fantastic. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, man. So let us know about, you know, the history of gangster rap. What role did you play in it? Well, I represent uh, Soren, and I was listening to him on the radio and called him up, and I was like, how come you're not doing any books, man? And he's like, you know what? Life's gotten in the way a little bit, and I'm pulling it together. I plan on it, and I was like, okay, well, that's good, because I got a plan. And we put our heads together, and uh, a few weeks later, we got a book deal. So it's very exciting stuff. How did you and Soren meet? You know, I've known Soren for probably 25 years because he was the one guy that was number one on the list to interview Ice-T whenever Ice had a new record out or a new movie out or a new TV show. So he was always in the scene. I always saw him at, you know, the rap clubs whenever there's a listening party for a new Ice Cube record or um, he's just one of those guys that's always on the scene like yourself, you know, so it's... There are a few people that you can count on when you go into a happening event that you're going to see. So Soren Baker, Hen G, and a couple of other cats. So, so George, where can they find a book? You know what? Uh, every bookstore is basically carrying it. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, of course. All the indie bookstores are carrying it. Um, the audio book's going to be coming out in 2019. So it's basically everywhere. You can go out and grab it now. It's great. It's got all sorts of sidebars that do deep dives into kind of factoids like you know, the history of the bandana and, you know, comparing East Coast and West Coast. It's like, you know, the West Coast had Lokes and the East Coast had Gazelles, you know, and, you know, looking at the differences and stuff like that. So it's an amazing, it's an amazing book done by somebody that was there when it was all happening. So it's all accurate, which you can't say for a lot of those rap books that are out there right now. It's something to be really proud of and it's something that's going to stand the test of time because it's the truth. The history of gangster rap, Soren Baker, y'all. Go pick one up. I understand myself? I, you know, I was from the hood. One of the, uh, you know, one of the uh, toughest projects in Brooklyn, New York City, for that matter, uh, Four Green Projects. And as um, I got uh, uh, introduced to gangster rap, I mean, we had gangs, of course, in in, in Brooklyn, uh, in New York City, but it, it was different. It was it was just way different, and we we couldn't understand. What, what ghetto birds were, because we had tall buildings, so it wasn't no birds, you know, flying over the projects, you know? You, you crash into a building if you, <laughs> you're trying that. So I'm like, what is ghetto birds? And they, they, they riding in six fours, and you know, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm from the projects, I've never really been nowhere, you know? So when I hear, hear the music, and I come out here to Cali, and, I, and uh, I'm listening to, because my, my earliest uh, gangster rap was really just uh, 
uh, Easy es uh, uh, Boys in the Hood joint. That was my first, and I used to hear it on the radio all the time, and I'm like, what is this place? Uh, is this make-believe? I, I, I really thought it was make-believe, tell you the truth. When I first came out here, and, and I, I would go to Compton, or I would go to Carson, or South Central, whatever, and then that night, I would tell my friends where I was, they would have been, they were like, yo, you were there by yourself? And at night, and I was like, yeah, like what? Alondra, it's a nice street, you know? Because I remember one time I went to, uh, Mac-10 was filming Thicker Than Water, and I went to the set, and that was one of the times my friends were like, yo, you were down there by yourself? And uh, have you ever been there? That was like in the 40s. And I was like, yeah, it was like 40th and Adam, you know? And I was, they were just like, oh man, 40th and Vermont? Or whatever, <laughs> wherever I was. And they were like, dude, what are you doing there? And I was like, I was interviewing Mac-10 and MCA and Fat Joe, like, that's why I was there. They're like, don't go there again by yourself, please. Shout out to Soren Baker, the realest OG journalist, music journalist, and journalist in the game. Get the book. It's history. It's history. It's history. Shondi Johnson giving the shout out to Hype Magazine. Um, man, boy, Soren Baker did us proud, man. This is the book right here. If you ain't got it, pick it up. There's a sidebar about the scarf, about Scarface and its influence, man. This is real. Thank you. A lot of great uh, people that you've uh, interviewed here. Uh, I know Schoolie D, Ice T, uh, some of your favorites. Uh, what was uh, one of your your favorite interviews or going through this process and uh, if you can share with us something that you learned that you might not have known before you went in. Well, uh, one of my favorite interviews that I did of the people we haven't talked in detail about was with Snoop. And, you know, I've gotten to be real cool uh, and friends with Snoop and we're working on a movie among other things together. But the funny thing is, is that Snoop's diction, as you guys know, was just so hilarious. So the thing is, when I talk to him, I have a sidebar in a book called Holy Skit. And I basically had him break down how on uh, the Chronic and Doggy Style they constructed their skits and how distinctive they were and how they brought, as Easy e had really pioneered and Ice-T and Schooly D had done it, but I think Easy e had really uh, brought a lot of levity and humor into gangster rap in a way that Obviously, on the surface, you don't think a gangster rap is being funny, but Easy e had a lot of funny stuff, and then N.W.A. did, but with the Chronic and Doggy style, selling so many units, and you know having W balls and the twenty thousand dollar stack pyramid and all these different things, it was so funny in the midst of all this chaos. So I talked to Snoop about how and why they did that on the albums, and then one of the other interviews. Uh, that I had that I really loved um, was with the DOC. And as someone who loves the music and studies it, I always thought it was interesting and I knew, I knew that this was true, but I didn't know the story behind it. So that's in the book and to my knowledge, you know, I, the quotes that I have in the book, I'd say 80 or 85% of them are stuff that I interviewed the artist for. It's not anywhere else, it's only in the book. And with that is a big sidebar I did, and I called it doing numbers with the DOC. And basically I had him explain on, it's, it's funky enough. He starts one and then two to three, two, three and four. Then I drop the beat out in store. And basically on nothing but a G thing, Snoop says one, and then comes a two, two to three and four. And I basically had uh, DOC explain how he worked with Snoop to write the intro and how Basically, the intro to the song is so important, and I like broke that down with the DOC, who wrote his song and then was helping Snoop craft his, you know, after deep cover, what was going to be his big introduction to the game. You want to talk about hype, man? Look, authenticity is number one, right? In hip hop, and uh, Soren Baker has been holding it down in uh, rap journalism really since the late 80s, 90s, 2000s, Los Angeles Times would not be where it is as far as a stature as a as a um, outlet that's credible and authentic and uh, with that said man he's not chuck phillips <laughs> soren baker the source legendary that's it slav kandiva peace uh, i'd say i'm curious to see not only the kind of history side to it but what 
if it gives any insight to where it's going, the future of gangster rap and all that. So I'm definitely excited. I'm actually uh, excited to take a little deeper dive into some of the history. Uh, maybe a little bit before my time that I haven't really looked at, you know. Yeah. I'm excited. I grew up in New York in the 70s, okay. 60s and 70s, so it'll be interesting to respect to see what he has to say about that time like coming over to here. So it's interesting. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I do PR for Tech Nine and a couple of the artists that are in the book, so he gave us a little shout out. And nice. Yeah, we're very excited for him. How are you feeling about the book? Too? Good, man. I'm, I'm actually in the book, so oh, okay. it, feels, it feels good to celebrate this with my good friend Soren, the smartest person when it comes to hip hop. So yeah. everyone's got to read it. There's um, uh, a lot of um, comparisons in here from, like I said, from uh, what hip hop is to what uh, gangster rap is. You have um, uh, focuses on the movies, um, the music, the, the record sales, and the comparisons. Why was that important to, to show that in this book? Well, this is something uh, that George and I actually talked about because I studied all aspects of rap even though i really focused on the art of it and the creation of it but i also was very in tune with the actual sales because uh when people would try to debate with me rap they would always throw like oh well this guy sold more than this guy and i'd be like no no he didn't look it up and then they come back and apologize 99 percent of the times if they did apologize but the point of all that is that the perception was because of the source and because of a lot of other things that the New York artists were selling way more than the artists out here, which was not true. The gangster rappers typically, like Death Row was way bigger than Bad Boy as far as record sales. And a lot of people don't understand that because they were trying to be rivals. But if you look at the sales and we're only speaking, I'm not talking creatively, I'm talking strictly sales. Death Row was way bigger and way had a much bigger reach um, <laughs> than Bad Boy's releases did. And then when Master P came out, he changed, you know, we had had the deaths of Biggie and Tupac, and then the labels, and he talks about this, stopped basically signing West Coast gangster rappers. Then, because if you think about it, we had this huge window until 1999 when, you know, Snoop came out with uh, no Limit Top Dog and Dr. Dre dropped in 2001, where MAC-10, who had already been out, was big. You had Exhibit, who had you know evolved into working with Dr. Dre, and you had then the return of those guys. But other than that, there wasn't like there was before with this steady wave of new West Coast rappers that were hard hardcore that were getting big. Then Master P basically had taken. Uh, no pun intended, the aftermath of that and made gangster rap danceable. So he was talking about the same type of stuff, but then made it to where, oh man, it feels good, I'm an unlimited soldier. Like, yeah, while I'm writing, uh, rapping about uh, the same pillaging that gangster rapper did, but I made it fun and I made it, you know, cool to dance to. And then, you know, we see, uh, you know, with Dre and Snoop's success in 1999, then we see soon thereafter we have 50 Cent, and then we have Game, and then the West Coast, you know, relaunches with the YGs of the world and the Nipsey Hustles and, you know, the Vince Staples, and now we have G. Perico and AD and these other guys that are coming up that are, you know, the next generation. Ready to, ready to get into the pages and just, you know, see what it's all about? Yeah, ready to read, learn more about the history think about how I can bring this information to other people. I'm a teacher, so this is like a textbook waiting to happen. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. This type, this type of history out there. Yeah. yeah. We, we learn about American history. We learn about you know, the history of hip hop, but now it's the gangster, gangster rap. You know, so that's what's exciting. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the book, about the process of the book, and what it means to you, and what you like people to take away from the book? Uh, the main thing that I, I think that's important and that I tried to articulate throughout the book is that gangster rap is not mindless music. If you just literally read the lyrics to Ice T's work and to uh, Ice Cube's work, just those two alone, 
if you just read their lyrics and you didn't know it was rap music, you would look at it as poetry or as amazing storytelling that basically explains these societal ills, these things that are going on in the communities and they're astonishing songs. I mean, it's just amazing. Ice-T in particular, you know, when I talked to him for the book and I have talked to Ice, you know, over the years so many times, he was uh, one of the guys that early on told the best stories, but he also showed, you know, the positive and the negative. And, and one of his early songs is Pain. And basically, you know, he's basically talking about it's always pain in the end. Like, yeah, you can be flashy and you can have the girls and you can have the cars and the jewelry and all this stuff, but it's not so fun when you get shot or incarcerated or your mom gets shot or you get on drugs or your sister does or what have you. And I think that's something that I thought was really important because gangster rap is not mindless music. You know, it's very, when it's done at its best, you know, it's incredibly powerful, provocative, informative, insightful, and, you know, it, it taught me a lot. And that's part of the reason why I love it so much is that, you know, it helped me grow as a person and it helped me expand my views and my opinions and, you know, get to know a lot of people on a personal level. Thanks for coming through. My name is Soren Baker. Today at Barnes & Noble at The Grove in Los Angeles, I signed and talked about my book, The History of Gangster Rap. Dana Dane came through, Hen G came through, you guys came through. We had a, a lot of people in the audience hearing me talk about The History of Gangster Rap, my new book in stores now. Here at Barnes & Noble is doing really well in stores and then online on Amazon. It's, you know, goes all the way back to Schooly D and I bring it up to what's going on now in the music and the culture. You know, people that are doing gangster rap now, we got the YGs of the world, the Vince Staples, AD, G Perico, Schoolboy Q, running it on down, man. And, you know, I love this music. I grew up listening to it and studying it, so it's an honor. I got to interview Schooly D for the book, Ice-T for the book, MC Ren for the book, the DOC, Snoop Dogg. More than 30 people I interviewed, Yuck Mouth, uh, DJ Quick, MC8, uh, just so many people, man. High Tech, shout out to him, talking about working as a producer with a lot of these artists and learning from Dr. Dre. Exhibit did the foreword and gave me a phenomenal interview. Dana Dane gave me an East Coast perspective. I got CJ Mack. I got so many artists in this book, man. Big Trade E gave me a great uh, interview. So many people that I'm thankful for. Big Hutch from Above the Law, Glasses Malone, Cocaine. There's so many. Big Les. You know, just so many people that helped make this book amazing. And I've been listening and studying a lot of these pictures I took. You're not going to see them anywhere else but in this book because I took them and they are my photos from my life doing this stuff. So it's very, you know, rewarding and exciting to have this come out. The History of Gangsta Rap. Please purchase it. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hit me up on social media at Soren Baker, S-O-R-E-N-B-A-K-E-R. -E and check out my YouTube, Unique Access Entertainment, where you'll see me interviewing a lot of the dudes that I have in here. And yeah, man, I appreciate it. And I got the women too, man. I got Gangster Boo, I got Yo-Yo, and I got Big Les to add some diversity. And I talk about boss. It gets deep, man, deeper, no pun intended. So there it is, y'all. Soren Baker, The History of Gangster Rap, in stores now. Pick it up in stores, online, worldwide. Appreciate it, y'all. What's up, everybody? I'm your one and only master ceremony, the great one, Dana Dane. Just got finished hosting uh, the Soren Book, uh, I mean, Soren Baker book signing, uh, The History of Gangster Rap. It was an incredible session right here. Uh, a lot of people came out, had uh, great questions about gangster rap. Uh, this is a phenomenal book. He's a phenomenal writer and a great friend of mine. So I'm pleased to be a part of this today. Go get your book, The History of Gangster Rap. And remember, check out Hype Magazine, all right? Because we are live, live, all the way live. Holla. Got my man Los on the camera. The Hype Magazine. I see Los Samos. Check it out. Look how coincidental. Who's that guy right there? Ice T, Chuck D, and myself. Ice T, Chuck D, Ice Cube, and myself on Ice Cube's page. Check it out, y'all. Get involved. This book is tight. It's a lot of details, and it's as clear.
close as you will get because he individually spoke to everybody because Soren knows everybody. That's how we do. Rooted, not polluted, you know what I'm saying? Loyalty is the best royalty. We've been down for like about three decades. My George and myself, as I was saying, and Soren, I've been seeing him around for like two decades. And, you know, he's a white boy with some juice. I see Los Semos, the hype magazine, gangster rap, textbook, check it out, the history. Bye.